Hi everyone! I'm so glad to see you today. Thanks so much for joining me. We're going to read a story called The Little Duck. It's also called Sikipsis. That's the Cree way of saying the little duck. Now, what other stories can you think of that are about a little duck? Have any of you ever read The Ugly Duckling? Is that a story that came to your mind when you saw the little duck? Um, now, this story might really remind you of that one if you've read it. And so now that I've said that, you might be making a prediction about this story. You might be thinking you know what this story is going to be like because you're comparing it to another story you know. And now, if you don't know either of those stories, that's okay. Like I said, this is a Cree story. Sikipsis means the little duck in, a, in the Cree language. Cree people are American Indians. They used to live on the plains, which is the flat, grassy part of North America, including Montana, the state we live in, and Canada, another country that's very, very close to us. Maybe some of you guys have been to Canada. Um, maybe not, and that's okay. Um, you can, if you have a map, you can ask someone to show you where Montana and Canada are. Now, I put pictures of the plains on this web page for you to look at. So after the story, or even if you just want to scroll down, if you know how to do that and not lose the video, you can scroll down and just see what the plains were like. You'll notice that there were a lot of grass. There was a lot of grass and there weren't a lot of mountains. So the plains, flat, grassy areas. Okay. Now, the Cree in Montana don't roam the plains so much anymore. Now they mostly live in Montana in a place called the Rocky Boy Reservation. And I put a picture of that on this page too. It's shaped like a boot. And you can go and take a look at that little spot on the map where the Cree live now. Um, the Cree people even though they don't roam and hunt on the plains anymore, they still do a lot of things like they used to do back when they um, uh, had all the space and the land and hunted for their food. Um, so one of the things that they do is, well, for one, the Cree have their own language, right? Their own way of saying the little duck, like Sikipsis is their own way of saying the little duck. Um, they have their own language and they have their own writing system. So if you were to see Cree letters, I'm going to just show you what they look like because there's some in the back of the book. You would say, oh my gosh, what are those pictures? But it's actually very cool. It looks like secret code. So they have their own writing system and they very much still use it today and they teach Cree children that, which is amazing, right? So another thing that they still do is they still get all dressed up in their regalia. Now regalia is kind of um, an interesting word. So just for a second, think, what does regalia mean? So I said they get dressed up in special regalia. What do you think regalia is? Okay, so you may have made a guess and you may have said something like, it sounds like it might be a costume. And you know what? You're right. It is a costume. But it's not just a costume, okay? Because we get dressed up in costumes for Halloween, don't we? We all get dressed up in costumes, but those costumes are not regalia. Because in regalia, every part of the costume has a really special meaning and a purpose. So um, people wear regalia to serious kinds of events, right? Serious kinds of ceremonies um, and like I said, everything on the regalia has a special meaning. So 
on different kinds of regalia you might see jingle bells or, or like bells that jingle or you might see feathers um, or you might see certain colors and certain patterns and certain shapes and each of those have a special meaning so regalia is a very special kind of costume um, worn for a very special purpose okay um, so people when the Koreans get um, dressed up a lot of times in their regalia it's for something called a powwow now that is another thing living in Montana that you might know something about. You might know something about powwows. If you don't, that's okay. So powwows are big festivals full of dancing and food and singing and celebration. And Cree people and other tribes might all come together and have one of these special ceremonies, these powwows um, with dancers there and I did put in here a video where you get to you'll actually get to see some traditional dancers and what their regalia looks like and how they dance okay and there's another story we're also going to look at um, in this lesson that is about dancers and their special costumes okay so let's go ahead now we know just a little bit about Cree, let's go ahead and read our story, okay? So I want to make sure that you can see the pages, and I'm going to go ahead and get started. The Little Duck, Sikipsis, by Beth Cuthand. The Cree words are by Stan Cuthand, and it was illustrated by Mary Longman. There was once a lonely little mud duck who lived all by himself in a muddy swamp not far from a camp of mighty plains Cree. Every day he would observe the people as they went about their lives. Oh, how that little duck admired those Crees. The camp was full of beautiful women and handsome men and playful, happy children, not to mention the fine horses and smart dogs. Hmm. Make sure you can see the pictures. And there's one over here too. The Cree person. Every day the little duck would fly over the camp. Every day the little duck wished that he was tall and handsome like those Cree men. There he is flying over the camp. I'll turn it this way so you can see the picture better. The little mud duck wasn't the best looking of ducks. Out of the water, his short legs made him awkward and slow. His bumpy, humpy beak was a bit too big. And when he was lucky enough to observe other ducks flying past, he saw that his plain black feathers were no match for their bright, fancy feathers. Poor little mud duck. That is why he admired those fine Cree Indians. He wished that he could be just like them, then he would never be lonely again. One day, as the little duck flew over the camp, he noticed the people preparing for a big dance. He admired those men even more because they looked so fine in their fancy regalia. Hmm, he thought. Maybe if I dance with them, they will ask me to live at their camp. The duck waddled back to the swamp and dressed for the dance. He wove some bright green leaves into a wreath to wear on his head. Do you see this circle of leaves, this wreath he made? Then he gathered some cattail leaves and tied them to his behind. What a fine bustle they made. 
Here's a picture of cattail leaves if you've never seen cattails before. He found some red clay and some white salt and painted his face and chest just like he saw the men do in the camp. Finally, he collected some shells and tied them around his ankles. He paused to admire his reflection in the water. If he couldn't be tall, at least he could be handsome. The little duck strutted into the camp. No one took much notice of him, so he asked a young boy, where do I sit? But the young boy couldn't re reply because all he heard was duck quacking sounds. Being polite, the boy didn't ask the stranger to repeat himself, but merely waved him over to the dance arbor. So there must be a little um, arch where the dancers wait. An arbor. The little duck tried to talk again to several men. One man greeted him in Cree. Tansy, short person. Anin Siwagamis, another said in Salto. How are you? asked the third man in Assiniboine, but the little duck couldn't understand them. A kindly old woman noticed the duck's confusion and talked to him in sign language. Who are you and where are you from? She asked. When she saw that the little mud duck could not understand her, she patted him gently and pointed for the little duck to sit near the drummers. Soon the singer started singing and many people started to dance. The little duck tried to dance just like the young men, but his legs were too short. The best he could do was a quick hopping waddle, which drew laughter from the crowd. The dust from the dancer's fast, fancy dancing blinded the little fellow and made him sneeze and sneeze. Not only that, but dancers kept stepping on him because he was so short and slow. Bruised and battered, the little duck waddled broken-hearted back to the swamp. I'll never be a Cree. I'll always be lonely, he thought to himself as he pulled off his headdress. There's the sun setting. Slowly he washed off the paint. Slowly he untied his ankle shells and he pulled his wilted leaves from his behind. He sighed what was he sighed. What was a poor little mud duck to do? Then off in the distance he heard the sounds of many mud ducks calling. Glorious, wonderful mud duck words that he could understand. His heart hummed with joy as he realized he was happy to be a mud duck and he knew he would never be lonely again. So our little duck had to learn to just be himself and to find others who were like him and could understand him. And so now maybe that you've heard this story, um, if you can think to the story of the ugly duckling, um, if you have read that story, you might be thinking of some differences and similarities things that are the same and are different about the story. And one thing that I thought of was the ending. So if I think of the end of the story, when the little duck sees his other mud duck family flying up in the air, and he realizes that that's where he belongs, he realizes that that's what he is. 
And then if we think about the end of the ugly duckling, the ugly duckling discovers something, right? He's, he's trying so hard to be a duck, right? Like our little duck was trying so hard to be a Cree. And the whole time he was a swan and he just didn't know it, right? So in the ugly duck, duckling, the duck was actually a swan and he had to discover who he really was. And in the little duck, he just has to realize that it's okay to be who he is. So similar, right? Not exactly the same. Um, and then there are definitely some differences, right? Because the ugly duckling turned into a swan and the little duck just stays who he is. He just needs to realize that it's okay to be who he is. Okay, but they both get to discover where they belong. All right, so please make sure. I have so many other things on this web page for you, so keep looking through, scrolling down. There are some other stories. There's even a reading of the Ugly Duckling, and there are some maps and some pictures for you to explore, and the video of the dancers. Now please watch that video of the dancers because it is so cool. And when you get to the end, you get to see the hoop dancer and it's amazing. You're going to love it so much, okay? Bye you guys. I hope to see you again soon.